Good. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, a warm welcome to everybody to zoom into this particular session. Uh, we are in the sessions where we're going to share with you the exciting programs that we have in the Department of Physics. So before I start, let me show you just one slide. Okay, yeah. Okay. So the title of uh, the presentation today is Opening Doors with Physics. So as the name suggests, we're going to share with you the exciting program that we have off to offer in the physics department, as well as some of the uh, exciting journey as a student that you can experience and also some of the career prospect. So myself, my name is uh, So Chong Hao. I'm one of the members for the department outreach committee. Uh, hence, uh, I'm uh, involved in uh, reaching out to the students and uh, some of you may have joined the session earlier on. I'm also the vice dean in the faculty in charge of outreach and admission. And you see in the panel today, we have uh, Professor Gong Jiangbing, who is the head of department of Department of Physics. And also we have Professor Thomas Osipovich, who is the deputy head of the department in charge of our education program. So before I show you the rest of the slide, I would like to pause here and invite Professor Gong uh, to uh, say a few words to the students here. Okay, uh, good afternoon students. Uh, it's a great pleasure to see you here. Uh, I guess later on, uh, many exciting details will be addressed by Professor Song, so I will be very brief. Uh, first of all, congratulations everybody for having finished A-level exams. I hope all of you got some very good results. So today I will be very brief to say just a few words. Uh, so you see, as the ongoing pandemic and ongoing war between uh, Russia and uh, Ukraine, right? So it's clear that for your generation, there are lots of challenges ahead, yeah? So it, as you embark on the university studies, I'd like to share with you or highlight that physicists are different from many, many other disciplines. We tend to look far ahead to meet future challenges, even though the future is uncertain. But we want to, uh, to develop understanding or develop solutions to uh, our problems in the future. Yeah? So this, I think, is very, very important than rather just focusing on the problems for the time being. And the history can prove that, okay? Uh, Fidex has offered many, many solutions to the future. And actually today's many technologies are due to Fidex one decade or two decades ago, yeah? And this pattern will continue if we continue to deeply understand okay, the working principles of nature and to sharpen our analytical and critical thinking skills. Yeah, so I think it's safe to say, yeah, I think Professor Song will elaborate on, on this, our future solutions to, for example, to energy crisis, even to climate change, yeah? our future solutions to the bottleneck in semiconductor industries, or uh, to, for example, to the game changer of quantum computing, would all rely on what? Um, physicists all rely on uh, the physics as a fundamental and a versatile subject. So uh, I think because of all those, our colleagues, all our colleagues in physics department are looking forward to making a long-term impact on your growth if you join CHS. Thank you very much. Uh, I pass the floor to Professor Song. Okay, uh, thank you, Prof Gong. Okay, so now I would like to uh, give uh, an overview to everybody on the Department of Physics program. Now, so this is a very informal thing. So at any time you feel like asking questions, feel free to type in the chat about your questions. And of course, uh, at the end of the presentations, uh, feel free to unmute and then just voice any questions, whichever one, uh, whichever format you are more comfortable with. Good, okay. So now let me start the sharing, yeah. Okay, good, yeah. So uh, before I start, I would like to flash this QR code to everybody. Uh, do you know that uh, our physics department, we have our own uh, Telegram channel. So if you are able to, if you're able to uh, uh, scan in this QR code and then you join our uh, physics channel, uh, Telegram channel, you'll be able to get updated information about the latest discovery that we have made and also even announcement of some interesting cam, okay? And of course, uh, this recorded uh, sessions here that I'm presenting here will later be uploaded on our department Facebook or and also CHS Facebook. Uh, you can continue to watch them, okay? So that in case uh, if your friend is interested but uh, he or she not able to come and join us, you can also let, get them to watch this. And of course, we have our contact for the Q&A. Uh, we have watched this email. 
and a phone number so you can call or you send email to ask us questions. Good. So uh, I'm going to break the presentations into a various uh, category. Like you know, first is the motivations, why physics? And then we introduce the departments to you and some of the physics curriculum that is in, uh, that means in alignment with the CHS curriculum. And then of course, uh, many of you are thinking, okay, with a physics degree, what can I do, right? Yeah, okay. So career prospect, yeah. Now, as you know, physics, uh, you learned before that uh, we probe very fundamental questions. Okay, we really want to understand how our physical world works. Um, and then we want to be able to explain a wide variety of things from the very, very small of uh, atoms, molecules, to things like space time and even the big things like cosmology. So from the very, very small to the very, very big, we want to be able to understand them. Okay? Of course, it is the foundations of many other uh, branches of uh, physical sciences. As you can see that, uh, they, they can branch up to different things. Yeah. And you learn physics and you know that, wow, we may have uh, simple collections of sets of theory and these sets of theory can be used to apply into a wide variety of situations and can explain many, many different phenomena of surface nature. And uh, with the different variations and derivations from the theory, uh, we can even predict what is yet to be discovered. Okay? So there are many advances that are made in this way. What about Singapore? Here's a picture of Professor Louis Pao Chen. He is a former chief defense scientist of Singapore. Okay, he's uh, advocating that, look, uh, Singapore really needs a lot of physicists because, look, uh, we do not really have a lot of people. So that means we need to build, build on an R&D and knowledge-based economy. Uh, with this, that means you, the brain power is very, very important. And I think as a physicist, we do provide a lot of training for our students uh, in terms of uh, honing your critical thinking skill and analytical thinking skill and creativity. Here is the pictures of the professors that you will work with and learn from in the department. I give you three seconds to take a look. What is the general impressions? Wow, okay, our professors are really coming from all over the world. Indeed, when we hire professors, we will interview the professor and ask, okay, what questions do you probe? What are you, you know, exploring? What are, what are the questions you are, are trying to pursue? Yeah. So we look at their interest, research interests, okay? And then uh, we do encompass a wide variety of research interests, which I'll share with you. And then uh, we hire them. Yeah. So you come here. Uh, I would like to advocate to the student, look, um, the best mind in the world are already here. So you don't really have to travel too far because here you can knock on the professor's door and then ask questions. And then knock another professor call and ask different type of physics questions. Yeah. So our uh, professor here, uh, of course, uh, because of the work that we have done, okay, so we do uh, harness and then uh, gain some recognitions in the university and win some awards. Okay. So, and then for, for example, Professor Gong himself is a NUS young researcher who works in the area of nonlinear system. Okay. Yeah. So, what about our research direction? Okay. So, as Prof Gong has already mentioned, like, we really push the frontier, okay? We ask questions. Like for example, we have a group of professors who work in the field of uh, nonlinear dynamic. Some of us are dealing with DNA, okay? trying to understand biology, aspect of physics, biophysics. And many of us probe the behavior of materials. And if you combine them together, can you harness even more exciting properties coming out from this material, functional material. And myself, I am curious about things that are very small, nano science. Okay? Why they are they different? And Prof. Wong mentioned about the fact that, oh, the future, some of the things, technology, you're thinking probably are quantum technology. We have a huge center, okay, very, very closely affiliated to this huge center, which is a national research center called the Center for Quantum Technology. And so we deal with things like quantum information and quantum computing. Okay? So let me quickly flash through some of the topics. Of course, you may not be an expert yet, but at least get a sense about, oh, this is what the professor here are uh, looking at. Yeah. Oh, besides that, we also affiliated to a few centers like Center for Quantum Technology, Center for Advanced Two-Dimensional Material, and also we have a group of professors working on interdisciplinary theory. Good. Nonlinear system and complex system. Okay. So, for example, we have uh, different professors there here. They're listed over here. And I've already mentioned Prof. Hong already. Uh, professor Li Qinghua is one of our young assistant and professor who we just hired. Uh, interested in all kinds of complex system, correlated behavior in the system, topological system, and so on and so forth. Okay. And then uh, Prof. Hong mentioned that, oh, can we contribute to the investigations and studies of uh, broad issues like environmental issues? Yes. 
trying to understand the interplay of different forces in the environmental issues, weather, temperature, ocean floor, ocean levels, so on and so forth, are very complexly linked together. And if you break it down, you can imagine trying to correlate the behavior of this by a network of integrated differential equations, which is what physicists are very good at trying to understand and mimic the behavior of such a system. Yeah. So from understanding one system can generate or maybe extrapolate to the second system and give some predictions of what's going to happen. Yeah. So many of the professors here take advantage of their skill set and you see the kind of problem that they apply onto is really, really very wide ranging. Yeah. Next group of prof. Uh, like I said, we are very closely affiliated to a group of professors who are also uh, members of this Center for Quantum Technology. I think the name speaks for itself. Uh, you have probably have heard of things like quantum computers, okay? quantum simulators, and then uh, cryptography, quantum cryptography, and then so on and so forth. Okay? So we, this group of professors, uh, they are a combination of theorists, experimentalists, and computer, computer scientists. Uh, so come together and then have the opportunity to come up with something really new and interesting and fun. Yeah. But guess what? The best thing is uh, many, many students do find some real research project as Europe student in the center and also final year project. So if you're interested in playing with atoms, manipulations uh, of atoms and trying to trap ions and then you can join the professor there and try to understand all these terms like how do you have a secure channel of communications yeah and we have a group of professors who are in the group of what we call biophysicists so if you walk into their lab uh, you might find it a little bit strange because uh, besides the usual physics equipment you will find that the students of theirs are working with dna working with molecular motors so the subject matter that they're probing is like they're looking right to the mechanical properties of biological cells, okay, from which they're trying to understand whether the cells is in a certain disease state or not. Yeah. Okay. Then a group of professors are in the field of nanoscience. In fact, this is quite a significantly large group because uh, many things are uh, what we call low dimensional system, right? We live in a uh, 4D world, okay? Okay, if you take out time, we have a 3D system. Okay, 3D. If you trim it down, okay, constrain in the two in the two, 2D plane, then you have a 2D world. You squeeze some more, you have a 1D world. You can further squeeze some more, you have a what we call 0D world. Okay, so uh, and guess what? The properties of those system is qualitatively different from their 3D counterpart. So it's not like the small thing behaves like a big thing. No, no, it's totally different behavior. Yeah. So very exciting things to figure out. Yeah. Then. We have a good professor who are in the realm of what we call the uh, theoretical group and astrophysics group. Yeah. So we don't have a big group for this, uh, but perhaps maybe more of an individual prof in a specific area. But nonetheless, they are discovering very, very interesting thing. For example, we have a professor Tan Ming Chuan. He is a string theorist. Uh, so those of you who are interested in this realm can talk to prof Tan and then he will talk to you about uh, how he handle and understand the string theories. And we have a uh, professor Edward Teo, who is a, uh, Black hole specialist, so you're trying to understand the general relativity and how okay, light photons will orbit around a black hole. Uh, okay, you may have seen a movie called The Interstellar, and they try to talk about the ring of light around a black hole. Uh, Edward deals with this kind of calculations. Uh, it's by no means trivial. Okay, uh, then of course we have astrophysicists, we have quantum field theorists like Professor uh, Dr. Wang Qinghai. Okay, interested in those things. Yeah. So of course, these are just research area that you say, okay, maybe I have not really uh, grabbed yet. But the point is, this is why you join us. Joining us, you get to work with some of these professors and they will show you the frontier. What are we thinking of? Okay, yeah. So I always pose the students some questions. Do you want to learn from some of the best experts in the field? If yes, I would encourage you to join us. Do you want to push the envelope in the frontiers? Yes, join us. Ah, do you want to pick up skill set that prepare you to tackle complex problem? Join us. Now, uh, I would like to emphasize, it doesn't mean that you learn to tackle complex problem A, you go out to work, you can only work on complex problem A. No, the skill set you develop to tackle complex problem A allow you to tackle complex problem B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay? So that kind of skill set allow you to be competitive when you go and apply for a job. And you can relate to the interviewer your experience in coming up with solutions to solve problem A. And that is what the employer will be looking for. Oh, this person's 
know how to analyze the root cause of different problem and come up with the interesting solution. Do you like to be in the environment, in the environment where you can invent things? If you like to invent things, we are the place to be because we allow our students to embark into research project. And that's where you become creative. Okay? You take some time to learn. Then after you have learned, you are the one who come up with the ideas. Ah, Professor Thomas Osterich-Boesia is a director for CIBA. It stands for Center for Ion Beam Applications. These are the pictures from the lab. We have particle accelerator. Uh, every time when we show the equipment to the student, they go, wow, particle accelerator. Okay, we're not the super, super, super certain kind, but this is a good, very functional and very, very versatile particle accelerator. So do you want to send a beam of fast moving proton to a piece of crystal and find out what happened to the piece of crystal? In fact, I have a student doing project in the lab now. She's trying to shoot the particles towards nanowire and see what happened to the nanowire. Do you want to investigate whether can I shoot a beam of particles or proton to a cancer patient? They say, what? Why do you want to shoot a beam of particles or proton to cancer patient? Proton beam therapy. This is very serious. If you go to the Ultron Park MRT station, you come out, you see a big building. This is called NCCS, National Cancer Center Singapore. You know what is at the basement of that building? A particle accelerator. So they are developing this already. In fact, when it's operational, they will bring the cancer patients there and then they will shoot the particles into the cancer patients so that the particles end up at the tumor of the cancer patient to kill them. I will not elaborate too much because Prof. Thomas is here. Later, I can invite him to share with you what is the goodness, what is the advantage of using proton beam to cure cancer. Okay. Ah, what is the meaning of shooting a photon towards a single atom? Do you have a shadow when you have this kind of situations? We have professor that ask this kind of questions. You just think about it. To do the experiment is already super, super hard. You need to control a single atom in mid-air and you need to shoot it with a single photon. Yeah. So indeed, uh, Professor Christian Kersifer is doing this kind of experiment and then trying to understand the physics behind. Okay. And some of the professor like Lo Huan Chen will trap many, many molecules and uh, in an array and then see how they collectively behave, uh, interaction. Uh. And our students get to travel to different parts of the world to interact with local scientists. So you see a pictures of uh, Kia Boon here. Okay? She, he went to Yale University for the exchange program. And then he took a pictures of a, a graveyard. Oh, why go to the graveyard and take a picture? Because this is a uh, Gibbs barrier ground, okay? So Gibbs energy is very, very important in thermodynamic studies, okay? And then, uh, so after he passed away, he's, he's buried there. So we go and take pictures, okay? Yeah, okay. So, ah, do you want to use computer modeling to understand the spread of disease? We have Professor Duane Lo. Okay? So he has students who is uh, stimulating, calculating the spread of dengue virus. Okay? Obviously, you can imagine the same model can be used to calculate the spread of COVID. Uh, okay. Now, do you want to visualize the collective movement of a group of electrons in a flat world? This is a two-dimensional system. So many of us are working in this area, both theory and experiment. Okay. Okay. So if you are a person who like to pick up new skill set, okay, and then excel in it, this is a place to be. Yeah. And if you want to be the person who come up with cool idea, you know what is the degree that Elon Musk has? He has a physics degree. Yeah, so see, so with your creativity, you can achieve, you can achieve a lot. Okay. Yeah. So now I'm going to share with you a bit more complicated, but I will uh, share with you the curriculum structures for the primary majors in physics. Now, of course, you won't be able to remember every single detail. There's no need. Uh, the details are in the department website. Uh, so we want to show you that uh, because of the formation of the CHS, the physics curriculum structures okay, has also been developed accordingly. Yeah, so we have all these modules that we're going to uh, propose to the student. Now, if you listen to our earlier talk in the CHS, you know that the entire program, the honors program, consists of the common curriculum, common curriculum, majors, and unrestricted elective. Uh, so under the major, there will be 15 modules that the students will be required to do. Here it is. Okay, we require you to do a compulsory module, PC1101 six compulsory module in level 2000, and then any 32 MC. Uh, if you take four MCs per module, this is about, this is equivalent to eight modules, okay? Uh, these are 
elective. That means you can choose to see what you really like to learn. Yeah. And our physics student also, we are requiring you to do this in from the UE space. The 4288 honors year project or the UPIP. Okay, yeah. So uh, I would like to emphasize the list of uh, elective uh, one until 37. Okay, so really a long, extensive list for you to choose from. Yeah. We are also aware that some of our students, okay, maybe uh, want to have some form of specialization, which is very popular. Okay, so astrophysics is uh, one of the common, you know, regular and then frequently, uh, that means uh, popular specialization. Okay. We do have a lot of uh, exciting program. Okay. And then uh, we uh, have uh, some of them, we have a field trip. Yeah. Some of the classes is in the evening. Uh, for obvious reason, you need to see stars. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, these are the module combinations. Okay. And then after which, there's some of the requirement that you need to fulfill. Yeah. So Dr. Cindy Ng is the uh, contact person if you want to find out more about the astrophysics program. Yeah. Uh, maybe at this point, I can also advertise. Uh, today is the NUS open house. Uh, in April, the department is going to organize department engagement day. Uh, so we'll have even more professors arranged to give you talk. Okay. Uh, of course, the final format has not been decided yet uh, because of the COVID situations, but uh, do keep on the lookout for this kind of announcement. Yeah. Okay. Then uh, since many of us are dealing with the realm of uh, nanoscience and nanotechnology, so we have a uh, specialization in nanophysics. Okay. These are the modules whereby it can prepare you uh, well for any advancement in terms of R&D, in terms of uh, knowledge, in terms of perhaps a PhD okay, in this particular area. Yeah. And of course, with the Center for Quantum Technologies uh, being closely affiliated with the physics department, uh, we have rolled out the specialization in quantum technologies. So as you can see in the module, you really gain a very deep insight into the behavior of quantum system. And then from which, you can ask the further questions, what can I do with this? And what is the fundamental process that has yet to be discovered, so on and so forth. Okay, yeah. Now, some of the students among you all may not be majoring in physics, but you are exploring. In other words, some students may be exploring a second major in physics, and some may be exploring a minor in physics or minor in astronomy, minor in different things. Yeah. So physics department do offer a few minor programs we have a minor in astronomy. Just to recap, uh, the minor degree requires only five modules, right? Primary major requires 15 modules, and then secondary majors require 10 modules. Okay, so I hope these are the numbers that you bear in mind. Okay, so we have uh, uh, offer a minor in astrophys astronomy, and these are the modules that we are going to recommend. Yeah. Uh, some students want to uh, show that they are knowledgeable in both physics and life sciences. Uh, okay, then we will have this minor in biophysics. Again, the design is to cater some training to the students to be knowledgeable in both life science as well as physics. And because I hope you appreciate and agree with me that physics tools can be a very useful tools to probe the biological system. Uh, so with this, you can provide very useful, valuable information to the to the uh, scientists in the other realm. Okay. And of course, uh, this is also a popular one. We have a minor in medical physics. Uh, Professor Thomas Osipois is uh, heavily involved in this particular field. You know that uh, when a patient goes to the doctor in the hospital, besides the doctor, there are also many other uh, tools that the doctor can use. For example, taking pictures of the patient using X-ray or using MRI. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, if the patient is uh, unfortunately cancer patients need some radiation therapy, uh, that, those physicists will come in very, very handy. Yeah. And of course, we have a minor in nanoscience. Again, this is uh, five modules. And then for students who want to gain not the second majors, but uh, some uh, minor uh, cluster of knowledge in nanoscience. Okay. And of course, we have also minor in physics. Yeah. For those who are majoring in something else, but would like to consider a minor in physics to supplement their skill set and knowledge. Yeah. Okay, uh, then this is new uh, because of the CHS, we wrote out that we understand that uh, from past experience, when we survey our physics graduate, a uh, significant number of them end up as a career physicists or engineers in a semiconductor firm, okay, a semiconductor company. So in that sense, that means we want the students to be able to appreciate that, okay, 
what is the linkage between physics and technology? And with this physics knowledge, how can I contribute to the industrial world? Yeah. And then uh, this can help you to be able to see uh, these are the relevant technologies uh, which is here or to be coming. Uh, then you can prepare yourself to grab this opportunity okay, in the technology sector. And of course, we have a second major in physics. For those of you who want to do primary major in something else, but want to consider a second major, these are the modules that we're going to offer. You don't have to remember these details because all these details are in the website. Yeah. So we just want you to have a sense of, okay, these are all the options possible. And then you can continue to ask us questions. And now you have a degree. What do you do with this? What kind of career prospect that you can have? Okay. So we would like to emphasize Physics training is really about, you know, critical scientific thinking, okay? And uh, of course, we will train you the domain knowledge in theory and experiment, yeah. And I would like to think that uh, on top of this, we are really training you to become a problem solver, okay? We know uh, not every one of our students will use exact the Newton theory or Maxwell equations to solve their problems in their career. It is the analytical skill, the ability to analyze the situations, ability to source for possible solution, ability to tweak the solution, to come up with the better optimized solution. The versatility is really what they have in terms of adopting their solutions, the problem solving skill to the solution. Okay. So if you sample the physics alumni, they are really in wide range of career. Right? So I list down some of them here, microelectronics, healthcare, data science, smart nations, finance, education, academia, industry. Yeah. When the employer uh, interview the student, they tell me, uh, they, of course, you know, they, they anticipate that the, the, the students may not have the exact technical knowledge about that particular discipline. Okay. But they know that with the foundation they have gained, they will be able to pick up additional knowledge that can supplement uh, what they have already learned. So the ability to lifelong learning is very important. Now, when I give this talk, I always like to show this, okay? You know that uh, every year, the World Economic Forum try to gather a group of experts from all walks of life, all kinds of discipline and career. They will kind of ask questions. What do I look for for future employee, okay? So uh, here it is. In 2015, these are the top 10 skill sets that employee, employee, uh, employer will be looking for in the employee, okay? Yeah, so you now complex problem skills so, so forth. 2015, huh? so... What about 2020, okay? It's changed to this top 10. Complex problem solving skill, critical thinking, creativity, okay? And uh, uh, people management, so on and so forth. And then latest one, okay? These are the top 10 skills that employer will be looking for for 2025, which is roughly about the time that uh, you'll be graduating and then uh, you uh, join the workforce. Look, analytical thinking and innovation, you see? So we, you cannot just follow already. You cannot follow the recipe or you have to be creative. Yeah. Active learning and learning strategies. In other words, your learning cannot just stop and confine within the four years. You have to continue to be able to learn okay, and then learn some more after that. Okay? Complex problem solving skill is always there. Okay? Critical thinking analysis is always there. Creativity, originality, and initiative. Right? Leadership and social uh, influence. And then look at the next two. This is not previously there. Technology use monitoring and control, technology design and programming. Uh, I'm happy to show you, share with you that our physics students, okay, so we give training to you all to pick up very good technological skill and also coding computational skill, okay, yeah. In different aspect of the program, okay, some are computational thinking program, some are maybe just a, a normal physics program, but the professor designed some coding exercise, okay. For example, I know that Prof Gong, will design and implement some coding exercise in his module so that you get to get a sense of those things. And you know, ah, next time if my boss asks me to come up with a solution, no problem. I can do a simulation to figure out what's going on. Okay, so 2025, these are the skill set that employer will be looking for. So please be on the lookout on this and prepare your learning journey that way. So our student alumni, you see, in all walks of career, in cutting edge research, data science, Right, transport, energy. Ah, we have a lot of uh, interest in development energy. And of course, education, engineering. Yeah. So some engineering firm would like to hire a group of engineers and physicists together to form a team. And in total, then they can come up with the most optimized solution. So working with people also very important. Uh, medical physics, I cannot emphasize this enough. Okay, so very important. Okay. 
with the aging community or aging society, healthcare is very important. Of course, healthcare needs a lot of doctors, not just doctors, also the others supporting expertise like radiation therapy, medical physicists, so on and so forth. And space, uh, we are also interested in space and also communication. Some of our professor, for example, Alex Ling, carry out the experiment in outer space because he designed instrument and then put a rocket and then shoot it to outer space to try out and measure things. Climate and environmental, they want no need to uh, just no need to expand too much and you already know that this is very critically important. Yeah. Okay, share with you some of the faces of our alumni. So Joy is a medical physicist. Okay. So she works uh, she uh, work in those kind of area where you can use radiation therapy and then try to use it to uh, help the patient. Shannon is like a financial physicist. So uh, he is uh, in the financial sector. Then you can imagine, right, the kind of knowledge that you have in physics can be applied into the financial world. Logan is a material scientist. Uh, so he deals with a lot of semiconductor firm. Okay. Ken is a consultant. Laurentia is again uh, another medical physicist. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, Jackson, for example. Okay. So he is uh, program. Uh, he's uh, trying to understand the climate and different uh, influence on things. Yeah. Kinun do kind of uh, mathematical computational modeling, and Chongying works in the company that deals with DNA sequencing. Uh, so you can see that oh, physicists really have a different. A wide choice of a career prospect. Okay? And then uh, really you are the one who chart your education journey and then explore and push proactive. Okay. Ah, okay. So we have our course department website. I would encourage you to visit us frequently. So let me stop share here. Okay. And then I will invite you all to ask any questions and any uh, comments yeah, that clarify questions and so forth. Okay. So maybe we have uh, uh, questions here from uh, Kavi. Yeah. Timeline after a PhD in doing postdoc position to become a full-time professor or working for a research organization. Okay. Um, typically, undergraduate degree will take you four years. Okay. So since CHS is a direct honors program, then uh, many of our students after four years, right, will apply to go straight to PhD. Uh, there is, uh, as, as no, uh, especially the U.S. program, right? They do not require you to do a master. Yeah, so they go straight to conduct a PhD, uh, carry on a PhD. Now, so if you go to U.K., also you do not need, a, need to do a master to go to U.K. The U.K. PhD program may take you three and a half to four years. The U.S. PhD program will take you longer, maybe uh, five, maybe six years. Yeah. Then after which, then you do postdoc. Postdoc typically is uh, two years, two years uh, kind of uh, duration. Yeah. Then uh, so uh, there's no number, but some, let's say, for example, if you do two postdoc, that means four years after that, after PhD, then you apply for uh, faculty positions. Yeah. That is typically the timeline. Yeah. And then you have an assistant prof position. And then that takes typically, no, yeah. Six, seven years. Yeah six, seven years, and then you get hopefully tenure. And I think that's what you wanted to know. <laughs> yeah, uh, may I add? Yes, yeah. please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, mm. uh, about this question, very interesting, but I would like to remind uh, whoever, ho however you are interested in physics, right? We don't design our career like this. This two way ahead. Uh, I think what's most important is you love physics and then along the way, okay, you open up more and more career options. I mean, nothing wrong to be inspired to be a professor, but uh, you, you don't have to narrow this uh, for the time being. Hmm. There are many, many possibilities along the way. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Now, regarding Professor Song's point about the programming, coding, right? Uh, this, of course, is becoming more and more important based on feedback we received. I mean, I share my screen to share a message I received last week. Yes, okay. please go ahead. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so this is a paragraph I got from my student. Okay, you hope you can see, huh? Yes, yeah. You can see your uh, Microsoft Word. He was offered yeah. a very good position at the Singapore Eye Research Institute, okay? He said, even though I have no background and are willing to hire me because they're impressed by my lab, math lab expertise. And why? Because I trained my class in my quantum mechanics course using math lab skills. Of course, they also learned other uh, critical thinking skills and so on and so forth. So, so that's a testimony about what Professor Song just said. 
Very good. Okay. So you see, so, uh, so department yeah. V, mm. uh, go ahead. Yeah, Jeremy, go ahead. Yeah. A number of modules uh, who could offer uh, uh, programming skills, uh, but um, even more importantly, we teach our students, right? When you program, what kind of program uh, you might be solve uh, uh, using uh, uh, your critical thinking uh, or uh, solve problems uh, uh, with deep understanding? Yeah, that that's how we differ from a traditional uh, coding uh, training class, for example. So Thomas, there's a question on mathematical yes. physics, yeah. Well, I understand that physics is very mass incentive. What can we do to prepare for the mathematical rigor in physics? In US physics, what do we need to build on above H2 math? Well, you do H2 math in high school. And then I think there's many ways to improve. I mean, you can just look at some books I understand nowadays uh, books are not really what people uh, are going to most of the time. You go to, uh, for example, YouTube, there's lots and lots of very interesting movies of pretty advanced mathematics, Laplace transforms, Fourier transforms, things you have probably not done in school uh, that can be followed reasonably easily. And if you are interested in this stuff, I mean, this is a question of interest, of course, but there's so many things that you can find online and also in books that will help you. Yeah, yeah. that's what I can say. Yeah, so so if you uh, want to get some preparations done before you come in, yeah, like what Prof. Thomas said, so uh, read through those, uh, go through some of those uh, website and video that will be helpful for you. Yeah, and uh, when you come in, uh, don't worry because we also have a compulsory module, uh, mathematical methods in physics one. Yeah, and in fact, for those of you who want to be even get more exposure to that, we have uh, mathematical methods in physics two. Uh, maths method in physics one is compulsory. Maths method uh, in physics two is uh, optional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing is, there's a whole continent of just mathematical methods. It's an incredible, rich field. Mm -hmm. And if you are interested in this stuff, then you can get lost. It happens to me even now. I mean, I, something new comes up I have not heard before. I, I go and I, I after after a day I come back and that was good you know that that is what what I think is the, the interesting and the enjoying the enjoyment that you should have in all that and mm. that's what we are looking for and that's what you should find yeah yeah so on uh, Asher's questions uh, uh, are physics graduate allowed to participate in career fairs campus interview along with other engineering and school or computer graduates answer is yes yeah so uh, if the Career fairs is announced to the entire university. Of course, everybody will be free to join. Yeah. And in fact, they, we have a CFG Center for Futures uh, Radius Graduate, right? So uh, they do organize a lot of the uh, career fairs. Uh, our Faculty of Science has uh, what we call the Student Life Manager. They do also organize a lot of career fairs. So uh, please be on the lookup. Uh, this announcement come to you and then sign up. Yeah. Uh, in fact, we uh, frequently invite alumni, employer to come and interact with our students. Yeah. And of course, uh, there's this thing called UPIP. Uh, it's, uh, it is the, it refers to the U internship program. Yeah. So uh, during summertime, uh, feel free to take advantage of the internship program because really that is the opportunity where you get to sample the life of a certain career. Okay. Same time, the employer also get to see whether this student is very capable. Uh, uh, don't be surprised, some of the students may already got a job before they graduate. In fact, it happens. We have uh, some students who are in astrophysics. Uh, they already got a job in a data science company before they even graduate. Okay? There's another student uh, in the final year, the project is with a consultant firm because they are using his analytical skill to do some analysis for the consultant firm. Yeah. So many different examples, but uh, the important thing is you are the one who's supposed to be proactive to do all these things. Yeah. So my okay. boy is in NS now. He likes to do physics. Please advise if he can obtain a double degree in physics with mass. Yes, that is exactly what we have now in our new CHS structure made reasonably easy. You can do a primary major in physics and a second major in mathematics or the other way around. We have uh, laid out these uh, very nicely. So that's certainly possible. Ah, so just to elaborate on what uh, Prof. Thomas point, the CHS structure is like, uh, let's say you divide it into like a pi. Okay, so it's roughly one third, one third, one third. Uh, so uh, the um, 13 module is compulsory for every student. 
Okay, e regardless of what your major is. 15 modules will be the physics. Then the 12 module is what we call UE space for you to choose a different thing. So your boy can consider taking 10 modules from there. Let's say you do primary physics, then 10 modules of math, then you have a primary major in physics and a secondary major in math. But since physics and math are all from the faculty of science, right? Then the degree is just bachelor of science. Uh, because no point giving Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Science twice. So it's Bachelor of Science, primary major in physics, secondary major in math. Yeah. I hope that clarifies. Yeah, okay, yeah. There was an earlier question. Let me yeah, see. Yeah, over uh, the chat. Uh, over the chat, I just sent a circulate an interesting example about what a physicist can do, right? Uh, also, again, related to coding and so on. So he's our physics student, and later he did also the master degree in physics. Then of course, he's most welcome in the data industry. But now uh, with my support, now he went to US for a PhD in uh, geography. Yeah. Again, using his physics background, of course. Yeah. A very interesting career. So that's why I said, uh, so long as you are interested, very interested uh, in physics, you care about development of critical thinking and versatile uh, uh, um, problem solving skills, then yeah, there are lots lots of possibilities along the way. You don't have to fix on one target for now. Yeah, it's too early. Mm. On Samuel questions, if I take a physics major without specializations, am I required to do research in all the areas or just do I just select one? Yeah, so uh, all the physics major, you'll be required to do uh, what we call FYP, final year project. Yeah, and of course, since you're not doing any special specializations, then you can choose any topics that is of your interest. Yeah. So don't have to do all, nobody have time to do all anyway. Yeah, just do one topics that you're interested in. Yeah. Okay, so let's see, there are more questions. Oh, okay, yeah. So. Okay, so uh, please feel free to type, continue to type your questions. Yeah, so uh, in the chat, looks like this is a format that is comfortable for everybody. Yeah. Okay, while you're typing, maybe I can also do some advertisements. Yeah, so, um, as I mentioned, in April, we are going to, we hope to organize some department engagement day. Yeah, uh, we do not know the situation, but hopefully we can do some form of a hybrid form of uh, presentation. Then maybe a more immediate future one is that this coming Saturday, uh, we have organized open house that's related to today's event, but that open house is uh, in-person open house. Uh, so we're going to organize a few master classes for students to gain some experience about how teaching is like uh, for the Faculty of Science and Faculty of Arts and Social Science. Uh, you can go ahead and sign up for those uh, master classes. Unfortunately, uh, I was just told just now, it's fully booked. Yeah. So it's already maxed out, but, but don't worry because we anticipate that because of COVID situation. So uh, after it's fully booked, right? Now we have another booking registration whereby you just sign on uh, sign up for it and you will be able to give you given a zoom link uh, then on the day of the master class you don't have to be physically here but you can just uh, zoom in to watch the professor giving a talk okay yeah uh, thomas has a question on uh, uh, what is the requirement to take the medical physics course what is it what is what are the requirements to take the medical physics course in yeah, there's, US? Uh, there's a certain set on the on the website you have to take a few modules uh, that are required uh, i don't have them maybe, maybe you can go back to the presentation uh, okay but you can uh, just on. check check on the uh, uh, okay i share again uh, hold on uh, okay minor minor in medical physics right this one uh, i don't is see this one? question so yeah for the minor this is essentially what is what is the you have uh, these there's three compulsory modules this modern technology and medicine and health then there's a radiation lab and a module on radiation imaging and therapy in medicine so these are the you have to have them and then you have to choose two of this list of life science modules which are more directed towards the 
uh, bio biological uh, aspects of, of medical physics. That is what you need to uh, do in order to gain this minor in medical physics. Okay, okay. good, good, yeah. But, okay, let me see. Oh, there's a few more questions now. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, pursue professorship at physics and maths at, at US. Uh, so, okay, once you have a PhD degree and you have done some postdoc, right? And then uh, which department you join, which organization you join is really up to you to apply to the department. And then uh, typically we'll invite a person to come and give a talk. Okay, and then if it's a good fit, uh, then the person will be offered a job. Okay, yeah. Uh, whether it's physics or maths, I think uh, no need to commit too early. It's up to really up to the research topic that the person is interested in. And if really the expertise of the person strata between physics and maths, then a uh, joint appointment for maths and physics departments are possibly uh, can be considered. Yeah. Yeah, we just hired one such a presentation, presidential young professorship. Uh, whose main appointment is at the physics department, but he's also a professor at our math department at the US. Ah. His area is um, machine learning approach to astronomy. Ah. So, so if uh, your I question- I hope this answers the question. Yeah, if the, your question is undergrad degree course, you can just, the, the, the boy can consider uh, primary physics, secondary maths, or vice versa, uh, primary math, secondary physics, yeah. Right. Then there is a question about the scope for astrophysics in Singapore. I heard from a friend that uh, there is not much scope for Sing in Singapore for astrophysics. Well, this we are talking about an undergraduate uh, specialization here. And I think I can the good conscience say that we offer a very, very good education for undergraduate astrophysics. You have a specialization. We have uh, very good people and we have uh, equipment that is necessary for that. Now, if you want to do a professional astrophysics career, then of course you have to go uh, somewhere else. For example, every year I go before COVID to Göttingen where you saw the picture before that prof, uh, prof uh, so showed where these bunch of people are sitting in the, in the Max Planck Institute for, for solar system research. And the, there you can get, for example, uh, every year. Yeah, this is the picture. We were there two years ago where uh, that is in Max Planck Institute, and they offer PhD positions in astrophysics. And of course, they are very selective. But if you are a very good student from our, for example, program, then uh, you can apply there and uh, work on a PhD program. And still, I have to say that, of course, astrophysics is not a large job market on this planet. There's not too many positions in astrophysics available. So I will not uh, I will, I will go for it if you're really interested, but be prepared that it's uh, not easy to find a lifetime uh, job in astrophysics. But it's, yeah. uh, if it's your aim and you, you burn for it, then go for it. Uh, yeah, go for it. Yeah, I'll just share with you, of course, not the majority. That we do have one student in the past. Uh, after he finished with the astrophysics, he went to Harvard and got his PhD. And now he's an assistant professor in Australia. Yeah. Okay, so uh, is it possible, okay, from an Apple seat, uh, uh, questions, yeah. Is it possible to do a second major in CDE, like computer engineering for physics? Answer is yes. Uh, so NUS system now is so flexible. So I would like to tell everybody, of course, you can uh, consider your primary major. And now, of course, uh, many of you also consider primary major and secondary major. The good thing is the secondary major uh, does not even need to come from CHS. Uh, so it's not compulsory, it must be from the same college. So your primary major decide which college you are in, okay? Let's say physics, okay? Then your secondary majors, obviously all those courses in engineering, that means under CTE, you can consider. Uh, and with the way we build the structure is such that it's possible to match. Uh, so, okay, so there are many different matching system that uh, you can see later, that, okay. Uh, I, I'm not going to be slowed down. I can continue to do this and then secondary major from CDE and then it's a good fit, yeah. Uh, I'm interested in nanophysics. How is it different from quantum physics? Do both of you have very different mechanics like how classical physics and quantum physics do? Now, okay, so I, I would say that nanophysics perhaps is closer to quantum mechanics than the classical physics, yeah, because uh, if you think about it at a nano level, right, you are still talking about perhaps uh, 
tens of thousands of atoms coming together. And then, so you can understand the behavior of those things yeah, using uh, much better and more accurately using quantum mechanics. Yeah. So the fun thing is uh, it, it is a development because uh, to, you cannot just say, oh, I want to do nano, I go nano, not, not so trivial because you have to create a system and controllably engineer the system as well. Uh, then you can study its properties uh, with a more meaningful systematic behavior. Yeah, so uh, I I'm in the nanoscience all the time. So uh, I my students need to learn about, uh, for example, solid state physics. So the quantum aspect of this is very important. Yeah. Uh, Next uh, question, may I know? I may add. Oh, sorry. Ah, uh, okay, Jamie. Yeah. The, the nano physics are normally, in general, uh, emphasize more, uh, for example, interaction between light and the material. But when we say quantum physics, normally uh, we emphasize more on the foundational side of physics. That is, what's the uh, exotic quantum behavior? How far we can stretch of ourselves to make use of quantum effects? Uh, what's the limit of quantum information? Uh, 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 and and uh, uh, what's the limit uh, of uh, quantum uh, computing, or how to make up a device and the total controllability uh, to speed up uh, 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 some computing uh, problems. Yeah, so I think the emphasis is also different, but of course they are related. Uh, in many cases, when we talk about four quantum physics, right, we talk about the, the manipulation on a single at single molecule level. But we, we, when we talk about nano physics, as Professor Song mentioned, we are talking about manipulating or controlling uh, uh, some material at a nanoscale, which could involve tens of thousands of atoms or molecules. Yep. Okay, uh, Thomas, you were saying something? Opportunities. Thomas, yeah. The next question is, may I know, are there opportunities for overseas exchange for physics majors? Of course there of course. are. Hmm. You can go for <laughs> half a year or a full year to one of the leading universities of the planet, essentially, both in, uh, to the East and to the West of the Americas, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, there's opportunities in all these places. We have agreements with these universities so that you can go there on an exchange basis so you don't have to pay them and uh, they look after you and we look after students that are coming from there. You don't want to fall behind in your studies here. So we make a mapping plan so that you take the modules there that align with the modules you would have taken here in Singapore. So you can do such an exchange uh, uh, stay in, uh, in any part of the world uh, if you are studying for in, in, in US. So yes, this works out very well. I've been organizing this for many years and it's uh, usually, it's a very good experience for students to, to go overseas and to view life in different places for a while and to study. Yep. Thomas, the next question also related. Uh, yeah. uh, how many MC does the specialization yeah. take up? And okay. if you choose specialization, is there enough MC to go for NOC? Yeah. yeah you, you saw that we have this one third, one third, one third uh, structure in the a new uh, curriculum structure. So there is some space for a specialization. You can have an overlap of two modules with the major. So the, then you have some other, not all of them can overlap with the major. So you have to take uh, three additional modules, which are not in. No. Yes, three three modules you have to take. Mm -hmm. But I can give you more precise information on, on these. Also, you have to take three additional modules uh, if you wish to have this uh, specialization. Yeah. Mm. So next question, uh, would I be disadvantaged in my applications to farm science as a second major if I take a major in engineering in CDE? So uh, it always decided by your primary major. So if you take a major in CDE, so you have to apply to CDE first. Then after that, then you can try to apply to farm science. But of course, uh, I have to share with you, farm science is a super competitive program. Yeah, so trying to apply in as a second major, uh, you may have to go through uh, uh, more stringent competitions. Yeah, okay. You can always check with the farm pharmacies department on their um, advice on how to go about trying to apply to farm science as a second major. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's keep the questions coming. Any more questions? Yeah.
Ah, okay. Is there a difference between double major program and the double degree program? Answer is yes. Huh? So let me explain in more detail. For example, let's say I take a primary major in uh, physics. Then my secondary major, I take econs. So which means that I will have to satisfy 15 modules in physics and then 10 modules in econs. Okay, that will be give me a primary major and secondary major, but my degree will be just Bachelor of Science. However, since econs department also say, oh, we need you to take 15 modules to give you a degree. Ah, then I can imagine doing 15 modules in physics and 15 modules in econ. So in other words, you do a bit more, ah. yeah, but it's not so much more everything about it, right? Because um, no, I need to do 12 module UE anyway. Yeah, so I just load myself up a little bit, maybe one per semester kind of thing. So I would be able to finish 15 modules in physics, 15 modules in econs. That will give me two degrees. Can you see the difference? Ah, so one degree, two major is 15, then 10. Two degrees is 15, 15. Uh, of course, you still have the common curriculum uh, that, uh, that, uh, 12 mod that, uh, sorry, that 13 module you must do. Uh, okay, yeah. So that is the main differentiation. Uh, so uh, by a com upon completion, you get Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Social Science, for example. Now, if you do 50 module in physics and 50 module in maths, you are just very good, okay? So because I can't give you two Bachelor of Science degrees, just Bachelor of Science and still Bachelor of Science because maths and physics are under the same faculty. I hope you get the idea. Uh, on the other hand, perhaps uh, somebody may do a, a, a Japanese language and a, a social science. Uh, in faculty of arts and social science, this is from two different degrees, Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Social Science. And then the students can get two degrees. Uh, I hope that is clear. Uh, Maybe I should say that it's yeah. uh, very confusing even to seasoned professors and <laughs> hopefully still under still under development to this uh, restriction of uh, people who do, for example, math and physics. Yeah. Uh, so in the same token, uh, uh, as, uh, as the questions asked by uh, Usha, yeah, yes. Yeah, if I do physics and then I do an engineering one, uh, which is a bachelor of engineering. Uh, so if you do 15 here, 15, then yes, plus all the common curriculum, uh, yes, you will get two degrees. Yeah, because you can do physics, which is Bachelor of Science, and then engineering, which is Bachelor of Engineering, or you can do physics and school of computing. Uh, so, 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 yes. Yeah, but of course, we try to advise students, don't, don't, don't max it out first, so fast, because you, you run out, you burn out very fast. So, so come in first, okay? Try to adjust to the rigor and commitment that you require to fulfill all these different modules, and then you, sense, oh, I can take more, I would be like to do more. I don't forget, there are many other aspects of university life, right? student life, right? hostel life, okay, and then CCA, joint committee, and so on and so forth, right? Yeah. Uh, so to answer the question, yeah, you can take a second major in comp science and uh, physics as a primary major. That's also possible, yeah. Ah, okay, so in terms of the, this kind of declaration of major and uh, secondary major, right? Uh, in the system, we require the student to do some indicative declarations, yeah. Uh, throughout the next four semesters, in the first two years in university, the students are free to change uh, until the end of the fourth semester, then we need the student to commit, don't change. Because by that time, if you change, too difficult to, to do catch up and so on and so forth. But within the first two years, uh, students are free to change. From our experience, usually students will declare their primary major right in the first semester. Uh, it is a secondary major, secondary minor that is a bit uh, you know, uncertain because they still want to try out and test out. Uh, okay. But usually a lot, of, um, more than 90% of students will declare primary major right in the get-go. Yeah. Is there an A-level requirement to get into a double degree program? No. All you need to do is gain admission into the college. Yeah. May I know what is the percentage of students that can go SEP or NOC in physics? Well, <laughs> the last two years, we had essentially nothing going on there because of COVID. Before that, I think it was something like 20%, but uh, I'm not completely sure, but on this order. Yeah. I, I am afraid I have to go. I have some teaching. Okay, uh, yeah, okay, yeah. Now, so. And also, right. just, uh, okay. So, and also for the information of our students and also parents, uh, we also try to target our department engagement day on a Saturday. Uh, 
because we understand that many of your, uh, some of your kids uh, may be in national service, right? Uh, so we will try to organize it on a Saturday. Uh, so please be on the lookout on the dates and time. Uh, then uh, your kids can uh, join personally to this particular program. Yeah. What is the deadline to apply for a second degree? No need, no need. Yeah. So you always just apply for one. Yeah. Once you come in, uh, then you, you manage the second degree or second major kind of thing. Yeah. Just get in first. Once you apply in, uh, then after that, then the students will, will be you know, uh, informed about what you can do, how you can do it. Yeah. In fact, there's no rush. Yeah. Come in first. Yeah. And then after that, your second degree, second major is always up to your own design of your uh, study plan. Yeah. Okay, let's see if I miss out any other question. Uh, no, this is okay. Yeah, okay, uh, there's a new one, let's see. Is there specialization a double major upon admissions? Uh, no, uh, we, we do not need you to declare your specialization double major right at the admissions uh, uh, juncture. That means you just apply to CHS and if you want, you just declare your primary major, that's it, yeah all the specializations and uh, double majors later. Once you come into university, uh, then you uh, you declare those things, yeah. So that means in terms of the IGP, that means it doesn't apply, no? that means uh, the IGP only applies to that first admissions, that means the first door that you pass through, yeah. Are there any scholarship relevant to physics? Yes, we have scholarship relevant uh, applied to the NUS system. So uh, we, um, there will be a call, uh, you know, means a cluster of scholarship offered by the NUS. They call it Cambridge Scholarship or Global Marriage Scholarship. Uh, we do not really break it down to the fine grain detail to physics, maths, and life science. We just uh, let the student apply based on their quality and merit. Yeah. And it works out that uh, it's quite uh, distributed. So we do have students with uh, life science get scholarship. We do have students with physics get scholarship. And then we do have students from chemistry get scholarship. Yeah. But we do not say uh, uh, X number go to physics, Y number go to chemistry, Z number go to life science. No. Ah, how is the student life of physics majors? Are they generally closely bonded to each other? Yes, uh, we have a, a very closely knit physics uh, group. And of course, uh, our cohort size is usually not large. Of course, we would, uh, Prof Gong and myself, we really like to have a bigger cohort size, but uh, for traditional reasons, our, our cohort size is usually not large. So in other words, you get to have a lot of interaction with the professor and also uh, get to a lot of interaction with your own student. And guess what? Our Physics Society, which is actually managed by the student, right? This is a student physics society. They have their own room within the department, big room. Yeah, so the department give them a room. Uh, not, 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 not all the society get this kind of, uh, enjoy this kind of benefit, but we give our physics society students a room uh, that they can hang out there and they organize all kinds of activities. Okay, and uh, Mooncake Festival, okay, all the different festival. And then just two weeks ago, guess what? Uh, Professor Valero and myself, we just have a staff student soccer game. We play soccer, not the big soccer field, but we play soccer at the handball court, the smaller field. Yeah. So there's a lot of activities that we are bonding together. Yeah, I would say that the physics students are all very closely knit to each, to each other. Yeah. Ah, uh, hopefully we in the next few open house we uh, can organize a student group. Uh, so you come and then we'll let the students talk to you because you listen to us. Maybe not, maybe you don't believe, uh, but uh, we'll let the student society students tell you what not they organize, what kind of activities. Yeah. Uh, cohort size is about 50-ish, 
Okay, uh, IGP for physics, we don't have IGP just for physics. So all you need to do is to gain admissions into CHS. Uh, so that means uh, once you gain admission into CHS, and then uh, what we do is that uh, you can declare physics as a major. Yeah. And all we not look for is a, a good pass in a mathematics degree. And even if the students want to do physics without physics training or without a good, a good pass, you know what happened? We have this thing called the bridging module. Uh, so bridging module means it's like equivalent to A level. So students pass that bridging module using their unrestricted electives uh, quota. Uh, then the student will be deemed to be able to go forward to the physics program. Yeah. So this is a design of the CHS. So you allow students with interest, but perhaps preparation wise is not, sort of not sufficient yet. Then we use a bridging module to help to bring the student up to the level, yeah. Okay, so for IGP, you will not see the physics specific IGP, yeah. CHS physics consider a professional degree, not in the sense of the engineering degree, professional degree, yeah. So the CHS physics will give your, your the student a bachelor of science degree. So uh, I don't think that is classified as a professional degree, yeah. But more importantly, uh, it doesn't, you know, so I don't think it disadvantage our student in terms of uh, competitions for job, right? Just I show you all the alumni uh, with their training, right? They can uh, compete for good jobs, okay? And then uh, excel in the different career sector, yeah. Because it's really the, the mindset, the training that's more important, yeah. Uh, if the graduate in physics can work in the field of material engineering, if or if a graduate of material engineering can eventually find higher learning deeper into physics, answer is yes for both. Yeah. Uh, because atoms and molecules, they don't care whether you're physicist or chemist or material scientist. They behave the way they do because uh, they are governed by the laws of nature. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Uh, I'm sure if you go to the material science department, you will find many physicists. In fact, the current HOD of uh, material science department, he has a physics degree. Yeah. So yeah, uh, well, because uh, we we explore. For example, myself, right? I'm a nano scientist, so uh, sometimes I count myself more uh, of a material physicist, right? Okay. So we do deal with a lot of material engineering. Yeah. Vice versa, graduate of materials engineering also, right? If they go really deep, right? they cannot uh, avoid, they must learn uh, a lot of uh, physics of the uh, material system, right? Because really uh, at the end of the day, you still have to figure out how the presence of certain component influence the behavior of the entire materials. These are all atomic interactions, molecular interactions at that very, very uh, atomistic level, yeah. But the fun thing is you get to learn this kind of thing, yeah. Uh, so it's very exciting and fun, yeah. And also, nothing stopping you from doing a primary major in physics and secondary major in material science. In fact, that may be even be very encouraging because then you can design, imagine your final year project will be co-supervised by a physicist and a material scientist. And we are very well resourced, as in NUS, very well resourced. The kind of instrumentations that we have at our disposal to tackle and probe the problem, we make many, many countries, many universities and we because it's amazing. Right? You, you want to ask a question, you have million dollars instrument that can take pictures of atoms and see how they move and interact with each other. Yeah. And guess what? You get to play with those things when you do your undergraduate research opportunity programs or your final year project. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, 
Ah, CHS common curriculum taken first in first year one and physics more only in start later. No, uh, you look at the, some of the suggested study plan in the department. Uh, of course, year one, the majority of the program that you learn, it will be the common curriculum module for CHS. But I think we still have two modules space or three, uh, a few modules space for you to start to do what we call the gateway module for physics. And also those of you interested, you can start to take some of the uh, maths module for physics so and so forth. So in other words, you get to learn physics uh, even in the first semester, not you don't have to wait until one year later then start to do physics, no need. Uh, we try to balance, uh, obviously, because of the common curriculum, you need to clear all those modules. So the first two years will maybe will gear a bit more towards a common curriculum. Yeah. Then uh, the, the elective, the more seniors level physics module will come later. Uh, but it doesn't mean that first year you don't get to learn physics. Not true. Yeah. You will actually get to be exposed to gateway module. Yeah. If I intend to take a degree with honors, do I need to integrate? It's a direct honors program already. Yeah. So CHS is a direct four years direct honors program. The moment you come in, uh, it's already you're already on the honors year track, yeah. And uh, it is very transparent. The degree classification of honors degree that you will get at the end of the four year, it depends on your CAP, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, okay. That reminds me that means something is coming up next. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, of course, I, we know that you have probably more questions, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, so today is like a first time that yeah, you get to meet uh, Prof Gong and myself. Uh, we certainly look forward to more such interaction sections with you all okay, uh, to either you send us email or department engagement day. Yeah, and then uh, the uh, faculty, how many deans these students are there annually? Uh, Jiangping, do you know? Uh, I can't answer this question. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's no quota if you ask, I mean, there's no way to answer this question is uh, if you qualify, uh, you are on this list. We don't say, oh, there's only X number, those X plus one cannot, no, no. If you meet the bar for the deans, you'll be on this list, yeah. Okay, Ken, so, so, so uh, I think because uh, other sessions are also going on, uh, we appreciate that some of you may also want to listen to other talk, okay? So maybe perhaps uh, we uh, uh, will wrap up the sessions here, okay? It's a pleasure to meet every one of you. Okay? So we hope that this uh, engagement will continue in the next few months. So until you know, your applications, everything are complete, of course, hopefully we'll see you in CHS, some of you in August, some of you uh, later because of national service, yeah. But the thing is, once you get admitted, the place will be reserved for you, uh, even if you go to national service. Okay, good. Okay. So if you have any questions, you can always send the email to uh, Felix at, uh, head myself, so that um, myself and my colleague can answer your further inquiries. Mm. Okay. Okay, yeah. So thank you very much. Okay, so have a good day ahead, yeah. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye.